One of the new features in Character Animator 2.0 is a thing called replays where you have a sequence of events and they are recorded, pre-recorded, and you simply push a trigger and all of the sequence uh, comes into play. It's kind of similar to actions in Photoshop where you have a bunch of things in a row that you want to have happen at the push of one button. This is super useful because let's say I have this character who is kind of like a monster guy and let's generate controls for him. Uh, he can grow his fingers and his hair. If I push B, you see he sprouted all this stuff and I push B and it comes back in. Kind of like how Wolverine extends his claws, but I wanted to make a berserker version of this guy. I probably will have scenes in my animation where not only does he sprout the stuff, but then he swipes at people. That's what I want to have happen. I want him to start from a place of passivity, get berserker, and wave his arms around. So I'm not going to treat this like a regular scene. I'm just going to record the actions I laid out. Hit record. Hit B. Wave his arms around. Okay. Stop. So it's generated a little bit of eye gaze, face, the triggers, the swap set, all of this stuff is generated. Okay, and I wanna do one little additional thing. I wanna have his head bob around a lot more. So I have twirled down the face. I've turned head uh, position strength up quite a bit. I'm gonna turn head scale strength up a little bit. Head tilt strength up. And everything else, the recording is not armed. Only the face will record at this moment. I know I just wanted him to go a little more berserk. So when he shrinks his stuff back in, he's back to normal. I'll go ahead and move this recording in. When you see this blend, that means it's going to smoothly transition to whatever's next. If I'm going to have this whole sequence of events show up as uh, something that If I want this whole sequence of events to be triggered with a single button and then have him go back to whatever state he's normally in, it's a good idea to have these blended edges so it transitions from where he starts to what I want him to become. The way that you do the blends is simply grab the edges and drag them in. You can see how it becomes a uh, smooth hill here. Not everything has blend handles. Triggers don't have blend handles. Either he has his fingers in or he has them out. Okay, and now to make my replay, I'm going to scroll down over here. I have an empty area on the bottom called replays. I'm going to highlight all the things I want to have happen within this replay. can do that by holding shift and clicking each individually or I can simply take my mouse and draw a box over all of those right click create replay and trigger and as you can see when you push this button all these things happen the dragger moves the hands around the eye gaze moves these things around it's 12 seconds worth of time, which might be a little bit too long, but I'm going to uh, leave it in there. The triggers panel now shows up on the left hand side. I have a trigger that says exactly what this replay is. I'm going to call it Q. Now, when I go back to my timeline, the way I currently have it set up, I push Q and nothing happens. And the reason for that is that I have disabled triggers. When I have the triggers record mode on and have him actually recording as it advances in the timeline when I push Q 
everything happens. And it's going to go through the whole cycle of 12 seconds motions. You can see how it is filling up this uh, bar here. When it hits the bar, then it's over and I can push Q again. And it's gonna go through the whole cycle. Now I think 12 seconds is a very long period of time to have uh, this replay trigger go off. If I want him to just spaz out for a second so he can scare people, I probably want something more along the lines of four seconds, uh, th maybe even three seconds. And the way I'm going to redo this replay is I'm going to select all of these areas in the recording panel and I'm going to grab the edge of them, shove them over so the number is smaller. I'm going to shove them to the left and make it more like four or five seconds long. There currently is no way to edit an existing replay. If you're going to make some changes, if you don't like what you've come up with, all you need to do is delete the existing one and then bring a new replay over. But it's good to think of your timeline as a scratch pad and not always as something that you are um, trying to do a full performance or full recording for. With all of my characters, now that I know what replays are and now I know how to make them, I'm going to invent a lot of behaviors that are unique for each one, kind of like in a video game when a character is just standing around. Uh, if you don't touch the joystick in a video game, oftentimes they'll scratch their butt or you know they'll flip a weapon around or something like that. That kind of stuff is really cool to see in the background. And if you have characters who do a set of actions over and over and over, whether you're doing it as live animation and you just want them to like wave at new people who are watching your Twitch stream or something, or you're doing it as part of a show, uh, having these replays pre-programmed is gonna save you a lot of time and it's also gonna give your characters like um, actual habits that they can reproduce on a consistent basis. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more creative tutorials, gear reviews and video art. Also check out our Patreon for weekly bonus videos and model photography sets.